I'm Bill Kelly. Last year on Land and Sea, we brought you the story of Captain Lloyd Bugden and his venerable old ship, the Topsail Star. Tonight, the story continues with a brand new chapter and a fascinating change in location. Instead of the rugged Labrador coast, we find ourselves here in the British port of South Shields, famous the world over for shipbuilding and ship repair. It's here in South Shields that our story takes a unique twist in the plot. Captain Bugden is here, so is his crew, and we're getting ready to cross the Atlantic. But one essential character is missing, the topsail star herself. Last summer on the Labrador, the topsail star in all her glory. Her superb condition belies her 35 years. Ships of her vintage were supposed to last about 15 years. She's still going strong. Her skipper is on the bridge. His men are at their stations. You've got to know them all on land and sea. You took the measure of Captain Lloyd Bugden. You liked him. You've got to know his ship. You liked her too. And you came to learn of their special relationship, a relationship bonded in 20 years of mutual trust and respect. Yeah, sometimes I talk to her. I remember New Year's Eve, I was at a New Year's ball, and everything was very cozy there. We were dancing, and the window was open, and I looked out through the window and looked down at the ship at the wharf. She was close by. This was in Bjorn. And it seemed like I could uh, talk to her. I don't know how to explain that, but uh, there is something, something there that uh, makes an affiliation. The Topsail Star had a well-earned reputation as the cleanest, most reliable, best-run ship on the Labrador. And Captain Bugden had cultivated over the years a legion of friends and admirers all along the coast. Morning. The skipper is a hard man to describe. He's easy to like, but a difficult man to know. Stern but fair, subdued but very decisive, very much in command. Captain Bugden doesn't talk much. He's a man of few words. But when he does, he speaks volumes about himself and the way of life he chose. As they say, to sail is necessary, to live is not necessary. That's written in Latin. Unconsciously, or I unconsciously think that a man, is, a man should go to sea if he wants, if he likes to sea. Our trip with the Topsail Star went beautifully, ending in Smokey when we transferred to the Bonavista and headed back to the island. Here, the two ships are wishing each other bon voyage, good luck. It would be a sad irony as events unfolded later in the summer. Early in September, the Topsail Star ran aground at the entrance to Bridgeport in Notre Dame Bay. We can only imagine how disheartened the skipper must have felt as his ship lay helplessly on the rocks. Eventually, she was towed clear and limped into the St. John Synchro lift under her own steam. I made an error in navigation and uh, when I detected the error, I tried to correct it, but before we cleared the uh, shoal, we ran on it, on the edge of the shoal. Two weeks later, the ship had undergone temporary repairs and she was back in the water, but the skipper had to reluctantly accept that her days on the Labrador were numbered. Over the winter, with a heavy heart, he scoured Europe for a replacement. Eventually, the skipper found this ship, a 15-year-old ferry used on a daily crossing between England and the Netherlands. She's the roll-on, roll-off type of ferry with the stern door, just what the skipper and Marine Atlantic had in mind for the Labrador run. She needs a lot of work, though, and the skipper has been here in South Shields for nearly a month, overseeing the refit. Right now, we're about 120 feet off the ground, in a huge crane directly above the skipper's ship. From way up here, you can really appreciate the size of the Duke of Norfolk. She's a big triple-decker with all kinds of room for the biggest kind of trucks and tractor trailers. And she can handle three times the volume of the Topsail Star. Her market value is between four and five million dollars. The skipper got a bargain, we know that. And we also know that a lot of the repairs are covered in the purchase price. 
but we're told Captain Bugden is still spending upwards of a quarter of a million dollars to modify the ship for the Labrador coast. Whatever the cost, it's a very big job. The yard and the skipper have been going flat out round the clock. Circum circumstances pretty well to govern my day. I had plans, I wrote down plans the night before as to what I was going to check on the next day, but uh, there was usually other things added to those plans and it kept me hopping the whole time. We came to a stage through circumstances, be it good or bad, that uh, there were repairs to be done on the tops of the star. The methods of handling cargo have changed. So I went to uh, Marine Atlantic as it is now and uh, told them that we'd like to substitute another ship for the service. The Roro ship is more adaptable to the service because uh, there's a lot of heavy equipment to carry at various stages. Sometimes you don't get very much, but other times there's a lot of heavy equipment to carry. And on a conventional ship with hatches and uh, derricks, it's difficult to get it aboard. We work like slaves trying to or get putting heavy equipment aboard. With this, with a ship that you can roll on, you're more adaptable to carry roll roll traffic. We're supposed to sail in about a week, but the skipper is about to get a bit of bad news, a three or four day delay. I'm going to tell you it's going to be ready, if it is not going to be ready, am I? Don't quote me, I for God's sake. Don't you dare quote me if I say anything like you're wrong. You're on, you're, uh, no, on, I'm uh, wrong. I'm right. on record there now. I don't this care. Is, this is I'm being recorded. Right. Is it really? Oh, yes, oh, anything God. you say may be used <laughs> against you. Just, uh, the general manager is going to hear this later on. Besides the work at the yard, the skipper's got an awful lot on his mind. He's dealing with lawyers and bankers on this side, and he's in constant touch with his wife in Topsail. Mrs. Bugden is handling his affairs at the other end. What's ringing? Hello? How are you there, Mary? Yes, me, me again. Yes, I'm going down to London tonight. Are you? I don't think you're going to be able to do anything, are you? Uh, well, I have to meet uh, the uh, Norfolk Line representative in London tomorrow morning. Oh? At uh, 9.30. So I have to go tonight to meet Mr. Homewood for breakfast at 8.15. And then we're going to see Mr. Bromwasser at 9.30 to uh, go over the agreement and yeah. try to finalize some things. Oh. Yes. So. No, <laughs> there's a lot of complications. There are, yes. It's not, uh, not such a simple matter as finding a ship and getting her. There's a lot of other things to no. get drawn up. Yes, I can't hear you too well. They're using the riveting, uh, the uh, cotton gone down on deck there now and it's making a lot of noise. No. Yes. Yeah. And the uh, work is not all completed yet. It looks like it's going to take all next week before we get ready. Yeah. That, that's it as for now. Yeah, I'll give you a call again. Yeah, I love you. Good night. When a ship is on dry dock, time is everything, but it really means nothing. The days fly by, but the hours drag on interminably. Progress is painfully slow as morning folds into afternoon and day slips into night. In this case, the camera lies. It isn't nearly as nice as it looks. It's cold and damp and drizzling. The work goes on. Can you tell us how many men are working here at night now and what they're doing? There's, there's, there's nine men. Nine men. Just nine on this shift, eh? Yes, yes. Well, ten including myself. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And what, what kind of work are you doing here tonight? Well, we're plating the deck, you know, plating the deck ready for the uh, the crane. So most of the guys are underneath? Yeah, that's a well, that's like, you know, I've got five wellers underneath. So you guys work around the clock? Yeah, night shift and day shift, like, you know. Uh-huh. And the weather doesn't matter, obviously, not too good tonight. Well, if the rain stays off, it's a bonus, you know. But uh, obviously, if it does rain, we get tarpaulins over, like, you know, so we've got to keep the work flowing, you see. Very good. Good luck with it. Oh, I hope so. I hope it goes well. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. With the constant racket on the ship, a good night's sleep is impossible. 
The skipper may get one tonight, though. He's taking the overnight train to London. Well, good luck with the skipper. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you in a couple of days. Yes, I hope so. I may be back tomorrow night. If not, uh, I'll be back on Friday. I hope everything goes well. Thank you. Okay, I hope so. While Captain Bugden is on his way into London, his men are flying across the Atlantic. The crew left St. John's at one o'clock this morning, flew all night, changed aircraft in London, had a three-hour layover at Heathrow Airport, and are now just arriving in Newcastle at two in the afternoon, tired but anxious to see their new ship. Now it's a matter of finding their luggage, no easy trick at this airport, and grabbing a cab for the 15-mile run to South Shields. Surprised at all? Yes, big surprise, yeah. Big difference in the top just there. Yeah, she's, she's gonna be a great ship. They're doing a bit of work on her now on the dock. So I guess when we get her back in this land, get her painted up and get her new land style, we'll, she should be all right. Well, I'd like say you got a good good ship here. A lot bigger than the other one, though. Oh, she's a lot bigger, yeah. A lot a, bigger than the other one. Take a few days to get the hang of it, I suppose. Oh, yes, well, I mean, we'll, there's a nice bit of work we've done on and the crew we got aboard here is good workers anyway, and I'm glad he got something. Oh, that's great. I'm glad he got something. Okay, sir, we'll let you get straightened away. Yeah, try to straighten away any corners now. Right, for sure. One of the crew members has an advantage over the rest. The chief, Ben Francis, has already been here a couple of weeks. Oh, she was, seemed awful big at first, but uh, as you get her a few days, she starts to get a bit smaller. And she's gradually getting used to it, eh? Yes, that's it, yeah. That's it. Now, you got all the boys over now. I suppose they'll be uh, at work at a lot of things tomorrow. Oh, yes, yes. We start work tomorrow morning. A lot of clearing up to do before we set sail. Very good. Max, it didn't take you long to get into your working clothes. Oh, no, you, got, you need to move the here. You're ready for work, eh? Yeah, ready to go work now. Well, there's a lot to be done, too, isn't there? Yes, there's a lot of work to be done here. No question about that. What do you think of the ship now? Just had a chance to look around her. Oh, she's pretty good, I call it. Probably gets a bit of work done on her. Gets right. a lot of paint and everything done. But we'll soon do that up when we start. Is this your first time over this way? This is my first time over this part of the world, yeah. What do you think of it? Pretty good. Give me a new land, though. Give me a new land any time. Among the crew is the skipper's son, Lauren, off from summer holidays at the fisheries college. He'll be with the skipper until he ties up later in the fall. The skipper, just back from London, will be happy to see his son, but otherwise he's not very pleased. The lawyers are still quibbling, and he'll have to make another trip into London to close the deal. Here on the ship, there's a raft of work waiting for him, too. She's been reinforced for ice, and they've all but finished replacing the top deck. But one solution only leads to another problem. The foreman has a brand new list of things to be tackled. Uh, I want to talk to you to come to you about uh, what materials you want on board when you leave. I've got a list of, I made a, 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 a list. This is the materials which were actually used in the dry docking when the vessel was in dry dock. The one big job left now is installing hatches and a new crane. On the Labrador, the ship would be useless without them. The ports that we have to service aren't fitted for row-row traffic. 
heavy equipment we could uh, roll on roll off at certain stages of the tide but not at all stages of the tide and all uh, weather conditions so in order to be more versatile we're putting the hatch in so that if we cannot get stern to the dock to use the stern ramp we can go broadside and use the crane so we're more versatile in that way and they're, they're cutting out for the, for the hinges down there now. Yes, I know that, yes. When they place those, and we get the uh, upper deck hatches in place there, you'll come back again. Oh yeah, we'll make sure we'll go through the full um, sequence to make sure everything's operating correctly before yeah. it's handed over to you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. Hopefully, anyway. Slowly, but surely, we're getting there. When we come back, the skipper signs the deal. The ship will be his. We're going down to London this morning to uh, finalize the purchase of the Duke of Norfolk. So as of today, it'll be official, will it? I hope so. Uh -huh. yeah, you never know, things don't always go as we planned. We settled on this ship and uh, we've concentrated on it uh, ever since with a, little, a few diversions. We did put our eyes on uh, others to see if they were as good or better, but we came back to this one again. I, see. I suppose when you're, you're, when you're dealing with this kind of a proposition, it can be awfully frustrating. There must be times when you, when you say, I'll never get this straightened away. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that is uh, uh, peculiar to ships, uh, especially when you go in dry dock. It's everybody's thought or unconscious thought that we'll never get her out again when you go in dry dock and we start tearing things apart. You see holes in the ship and, then, and uh, you only have a few days to get out. Well, what, do you, what do you make of all of this? Quite impressive with the ship. Uh, I think it will be a, a short time and she'll be part of the family as, as the top sister was. Right. As people uh, seeing us uh, sitting up on this uh, Pullman, in this Pullman car in such uh, luxury this morning or such comfort will say what a great job that fellow has, how easy a task it is. but. Uh, it's far from uh, simple and it's not as smooth as it looks. The skipper and son Lorne arrive at the main train station in London. It's going to be a hectic day. The skipper's first stop is London Broker. Uh, you have to have your finger on the pulse, on the market. You go out and uh, you realize there are thousands of different types of ships of all states and uh, we had to find the ship that he wanted to fit the bill for his trading, type of trading, uh, economics. So would you and have I shown think him we found it. So would you have shown him a number of boats? Oh, 50, I think. Well, About 50, yes, in various parts of the world. Yes, yes. yes. This, he's a very particular man, a perfectionist. Uh, uh, did he put you through your paces? You're tempting me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would say he's a very fair master. He's a hard one. He knows what he wants, and uh, I think we've we've got him what he wants. Well, you've got a good boat yes. for him. Yes, oh yes, yes, no doubt at all about that. And, uh, In fact, uh, I've offered to sell it again for him to make a profit right now if he wants. <laughs> That's how good it is. Now it's down to the real business, finalizing the deal. He has been paid. Okay. I have various forms here I have to complete in order to... Well, they won't issue the carving and marking note until the bill of sales lodge, will they? Yes, and also you want appointment of authorised officer and a form C347, but we have those here, so... OK, gentlemen, I think that concludes all our business for the moment. Um, Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Mr. Goff. Nice to meet you. I hope everything goes well with yes. thank, you, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Nice to meet you very much. Okay.
Back at the ship, a slight problem. One of the men is injured. Bill, what happened to it? We were down the hole, Bill, cleaning out the, the tanks, the fuel tanks, and uh, we were chipping off some things that the welders had, had left on. A bit of scrap, and I got a piece of metal in my eye. Pretty, it looks pretty bad, is it? As bad as it looks? Yes, but it's, uh, it hurts a nice bit, yeah. We're still about a day away from sailing, a frantic time for the captain and crew. But we've got time on our hands, a bit of time to take in the South Shields Newcastle area. You're all invited. The shipworks in South Shields are a sight to behold. Cranes and docks for miles on end. At one time, when shipbuilding was at its peak, about 120,000 people worked here. Only a fraction of that number now, but by any standards, the yards are still very large. The city of South Shields has a population approaching a quarter of a million, and it seemed to us like most of them turned out for Saturday's open-air market, a tradition going back hundreds of years. They're charging you $9.99 in the shops for these girls. We're charging you $4.99 today, and you're buying perfects. Pick them out today. All sizes, all colors. There we are, $4.99 to clear them out. Any size there, girls. They are $4.99. Forget your stereotypical stuffy Englishman. The people around here are incredibly friendly. Now, if you're not into shopping, how about a nice afternoon in a good old English pub? Take along the whole family if you like. Age doesn't matter. It's only three o'clock, but the bartender is shouting out last call. Over here, we're told, everybody takes a mid-afternoon tea break. Perhaps a stroll along the beach is more your cup of tea. Or how about an hour at the carnival? Steer clear of that machine. A good piece of advice from a certain person who learned the hard way. Maybe you could look for something not quite so chancy. A game of bingo, perhaps. You can play here any hour of the day or night. Remember, bingo starts, or eyes down, as they say, a half hour after the doors open. Uh, have you ladies just come from bingo? Yes. yes. Any luck? Yes, yes, a little bit. A little, a little bit, bit yes. yes. What did you win? One pound One pound six. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then a six. There was a few uh, called. Was that the letter T or a straight no, line? No, we don't have that in there. I wish we did. Yes. I like the American bingo. Oh, Is that yes. what you mean? Under yes. the bean, under the eye? Yes. They don't have that here now. Oh, how does it work just, here? Just, just 15 numbers on a card. Bingo so goes on all day, doesn't it? It says today because the bachelors are coming tonight. The bachelors? Yes. yes. Well, I think I'm going to come too. You're going to come tonight, I think. So they say they're staying for that sea, some of them, you know, and they'll be an old day. Right. Oh, so. But <laughs> usually it closes now, then it opens again a bit later on. Oh, I see. Uh huh. But well, they're I... staying open for the bachelors. It sounds like a nice night. It's a very yes. good club. Yes. 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 Excel excellent club, yes. And you can get a beer or two, get I guess. Get a drink, right? yes. A uh, drink, a yes. Food, anything. Anything you want. Unless you're a mariner, you've probably never heard of South Shields, but there are few people who haven't heard of Newcastle, the principal city in this part of England. Well, if you haven't heard of the city, you've certainly heard the expression, bringing coals to Newcastle. Newcastle itself goes back to the days of the Romans, but the expression came much later when they found a lot of coal here. In the 1800s, for example, there were over 300 collieries in this area. Hardly time enough to show you the whole area, but you get the idea. If we don't hurry, we're going to miss our ship. Back to the ship, just in time to load and go. She's still the Duke of Norfolk, but not for much longer. The skipper is really excited. We're here now with our new big baby, and uh, we're anxious to get her out and take it home to show it off. Show her off he will, but not until next week in the conclusion of our two-part series. Be sure and join us as the Duke of Topsail makes her way across the Atlantic and up the Labrador. We'll also tell you what became of the topsail star and how the skipper is adjusting to his brand new partner.